first things first, chosen ones, empaths. I don't want you not knowing your value. Like considering, am I grade A supply? Was I grade A supply? You've got to realize that the narcissist is the scum of the earth. And if you love that individual, you cared for that individual. Yes, we're not perfect. We're not perfect. No one's perfect. Yeah? Humankind are not perfect. All right? We're not. But if you love that individual, you poured forth your emotions. You you tried to problem solve. You know, you you took your children out. You raised your children best you can. You, you tried your utmost. Maybe you don't have children, maybe you do, but either way you put in maximum effort. Yes, I'm not gonna deny that through time your supply got with it. It naturally happens, it's a natural occurrence. But I want you to know that for a narcissist to run into an empath, a super empath, a chosen one, it's rare. Majority of the world are narcissistic, majority of the world are uh, sociopaths psychopaths they say that it's rare but that's diagnosed cases there's a lot of undiagnosed psychopaths narcissists and sociopaths in the world they're undiagnosed right so if you as an empath you're that potent supply for them you are a grade a supplier right and you're questioning now is the narcissist ruminating about me are they thinking about me you've got to realize they are thinking about you if you're implementing not um if you're implementing the grey rock method, if you're implementing um, no contact to the best of your ability, then they're ruminating about you. If you stop reaching out to them, you stop hunting them down, you stop trying to problem solve, this is when it kicks in for them. Yeah, They're ruminating you when you were doing that as well, even when you was chasing and pleading and, and trying, to, trying to work things out if they discarded you or whatnot. And you was trying to trying to sort things out. Yes, they were ruminating about then. But when you go quiet, the ruminating becomes a lot more aggressive within their minds. It disturbs their spirit a lot more. They question where you are. They question what you're doing. They think about who you're with. They do this because remember, this is why I always say, it doesn't matter if you were discarded or you had to get rid of them. Either way... Um, or they cheated on you or something like that and you, or they done you so wrong you had to get rid of them either way the narcissist is never done with you they're never done with you they always aim for you to be in their lives they always aim for it okay and once you set firm boundaries in place this will give a clear message to them it will create an energy shift in the atmosphere it will create an energy shift of where you're not interested in them no longer okay and this triggers them to ruminate about you really go over things not from a standpoint of regret not for a standpoint of feeling guilty not like that it's wondering why you're not reaching out it's wondering why you're not pleading for them to be back in your lives it's wondering why that you're not doing these things okay so you need to be very assertive yeah we have to do some of the stuff they've done back to us. Yeah, we have to. And there's natural self-defense mechanisms in place that actually do this, that actually implement this for us, right? Um, this is what happens, okay? So, just know they are thinking about you, okay? But some of the, it's not good things they might not be thinking. They may be thinking of ways how to act revenge. Please press the like and subscribe button and help your brother out. It'll take two seconds of your time, thank you. But they may be thinking of ways that they can damage you, you know. They'll be, they'll be, they'll be ruminating on things, how they can bring destruction. Remember, I've always said they ruminated when they were with you. I always said that they're very premeditative, yeah? They premeditate a lot, right? Before they do anything, they really think about it. And this is the ruminating. The narcissist I was with, I remember I was at the hospital with her and she was arguing with the doctor. I wasn't there, but the doctor apparently called her very, um, he said that you, 
you ruminate too much and you're manipulative. This was a doctor. He wasn't a psychological doctor. He wasn't, um, he was a, a physical doctor to do with physical problems and stuff, right? Like body and stuff like that, right? Like it wasn't, he wasn't a psychologist or anything, but he could see straight away that the person ruminates too much and also um, they're very manipulative. And there's me being a sucker, just an idiot. Like, oh, did he say that? What did he mean by that? And I'm all, you know what I mean? I'm being a little monkey, being a little flying monkey. But, because this is what they do, they, they, they get the flying monkeys to, do you know what I mean? Like, because I was just on the narcissist side. I didn't know at the time, but I did wake up. So hopefully, you know what I mean? Like, I woke up to it too. But this doctor knew about it. He sussed it out straight away. He's not an idiot, he sussed it right out straight away. But there's me being a silly idiot with my love goggles on, thinking that, you know, they're the greatest thing on earth and that, like, because they've, they've got this persona. Um, I didn't think they were the greatest thing on earth, but I'm just trying to say, like, I, I didn't see their defects, I didn't see their, their faults. But they suffer with ruminating, they do, they do. They, they ruminate thinking what you think about them. They ruminate about stuff like just just an everyday moment right just trying to get through the day they're constantly thinking about what people think about them how they're presented to the world remember they're very they're very shallow and very insecure so they're very concerned about what the outward world thinks about them how their outward appearance projects but in in terms of being a grade a supplier like you are trust me man they they think about you in there with their new supply they think about you when they're with their new supply. That's why I always tell you, they try and turn the new supply into you. Yeah? So, what you can do, the, 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 main, the main thing that, that, that will enforce this, and you need to lay down the law. Yeah? And the law is no contact. The law is minimal contact. Right? The law is, if you've got children, is establish the grey rock method. Okay? You know what I mean? We don't even need to worry about what they're thinking about us. Because they're just negative beings anyway. But they do think about you an awful lot. They think about you an awful lot. But the further that we can detach from them, the further we can cut the ties. Let them think all they want. They can go and do... They can go and... These lot are all into certain spiritual practices and stuff where they, not all of them, but they, some of the spiritual narcissists are into these black magics and doing these kinds of things. Let them go and pray when it's a full moon and do whatever they want to do, some, some rituals that they carry out. I'm not saying all of them do it, but there are spiritual narcissists. I believe the narcissist that I was with was a spiritual narcissist. Um, that's what they do, right? But I will mention, yeah, for people that do have children but thanks to a subscriber he pointed out to me thank you because he this is why i say we always teach each other um and he did tell me to look over it and 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 try and say what i think about it. and i did have a look over it over a few um things about parallel parenting it's something that you should implement i believe it's a very powerful a tool that you can implement if you do have children with them right because from what it said from what I understand it was saying it's basically parallel parenting from what I understand is where you know one parent will have them for um, X amount of days a week the other parent will have them for another set amount of days a week but neither of the parents um, communicate with each other they both raise the child in their own in their way. They they meet at a neutral location, not at each other's houses. When you when you um, when you bring the child to one another, I think you communicate by writing. Um, you don't attend events together. You don't attend school the school together. It's separate. It's not co-parenting. It's parallel parenting. One bit of information that when I was looking into it that I didn't understand, it was saying that it said, oh, um, that if you're doing parallel parenting, 
one parent will take on the school side of things, one parent will take on the religious side of things. And that's where it got a bit confusing because I feel like someone's going to be left out. If, if one parent has to um, only do one thing and then the other parent does the other side of things, I think it gets a bit confusing. But if you can have a balance where um, on those days when you have them, you take them to school, for example, and then other days the other parent takes them to school, for example, um, in terms of religious matters, if you are religious, um, and the narcissist is trying to bring them up one way, and you're trying to bring them up another way, that would happen anyway, even if you were co-parenting, you know? If, like, this is what you're gonna get a clash with them. Um, and you, what you've gotta realize is, the narcissist wants to go for sole custody anyway. A lot of narcissists will try and go to sole custody and actually take your children from you. That's how wicked they are, you know? But I think, thanks to that subscriber, is, um, he's taught me something new, and I appreciate it, because I feel like if you do, sorry, let me have some of my tea. If you do parallel parenting, it is a way to really enforce this no contact it's laying down the law that you can't infiltrate my life anymore you can't mess with my life you know you can't do anything and then when you have your child for three four days a week and then on the days off your your days off you know you see your child and again in a few days so it'll be all right but at least you have your headspace, at least you have your freedom, but the narcissist is not gonna let that happen. The narcissist is, wants to keep you around. They either wanna go for the total discard, where they're gonna go for soul custody, or they wanna keep you on strings. They wanna keep you around. They like communicating with you on a daily basis. They like all of that, it's all supply for them. You know, even if they're saying they're not interested in you, even if they're saying they don't want to be with you, they love having your supply around and they ruminate on you. That's what I'm saying about this video. They ruminate on you. They ruminate on you to a massive extent and this is why they want you around. This is why a lot of them won't let parallel parenting happen. So I do need to look into it a bit more to understand how, from the legal side of how this can be in place because on the video they said something about I kept rewinding it back and it was saying something about soul custody um, that it can go if parallel parenting don't work out it can go to soul custody and I was thinking hold on a minute I was getting a bit confused so I will have a look into it a bit more um, I'm not sure what the person was on and it was a lawyer that I was watching um, talking about it um, it might have been the accent I just couldn't I couldn't grasp what they were saying at one part of it but um, it is a powerful tool for those of you that do have children so we all need to say thanks to that subscriber that kind of put that message out there so hopefully this get this reaches the right people and if you can implement this into your own lives I see I see it as a wonderful um, benefit to be able to do this um, you know and then think about it on those days when you, the, the narcissist doesn't have the child and you're with your child, narcissist is going to be ruminating about you. What are they doing? Where did they go? What are they doing? But they can't even ask you. And if you're that firm in your stance where when, they, when they're with the narcissist parent, you don't indulge in that kind of behaviour and you kind of just think to yourself, you know what, uh, my child's with the parent, I'm gonna relax, I'm gonna detach myself, I'm gonna desensitize. I will see my child again in a few days and I'm looking forward to it. And then focus on your purpose on the days off that you're away from your child. It will give you time to focus on your purpose. Everyone works, but there's other things we can get into, there's other ventures we can get into, you know? With everything so fast paced in the world now, there's so many purposes and so many things that we can get into. Um, you know, I, I read a comment earlier of someone who wrote a book on... I always talk about this, but they wrote a book 
um, and I see it in the comment section, they wrote a book on their narcissist and they haven't published it yet, but I did say to them to let me know when they do publish it, if they can do it on Amazon self-publish or something, um, to let me know and I'll, I'll let you guys know what book it is, maybe some of you want to check it out. Um, but yeah, this is what it's about because if you've got a three, four days off by yourself and you're working, you maybe you're working on those days, um, after work there's still time to focus on your purpose whether it's putting an hour in writing your book or a novel or whatever or whatever it might be man building your business or whatever there's so many things like drop shipping and e-commerce different e-commerce things and all of that but this is why I say when the narcissist sees you making movements sees you in do sees you doing things like you know what I mean like you're getting your 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 you're, I don't want to swear, but you're getting your stuff back together. You're getting yourself back together. You're healing. You're, you're, you're getting on your purpose. This is make them jealous, man. This will make them ruminate you to the maximum. Remember, you are that grade A supply. Yeah, you slip through their fingers. So once we lay down the law, even if they've discarded you, once you firmly say, there's no way you can get back into my life. I gave you an opportunity. I reached out to you. I pleaded with you. I tried to sort it out of you. You weren't interested. You didn't listen. You didn't reciprocate. You didn't understand what I was saying. It's done. No more chances. I ain't even going down that route again. And even if you try and hoover me, I'm never coming back. That's the mindset that we need to have. Because we are dealing with devils. We have to break the trauma bond. They are not our lover. They never was our lover. They were someone sent our way from the enemy or from the devil for our destruction. Even if you count the good times, you know, you think of the good times and stuff like that. It doesn't really equate to what it was. You know, everything was from us still. They're very boring people. They're very boring individuals. Yeah? They're very boring. And I'm not trying to hurt any of your feelings if you've still got tendencies towards these individuals. Because naturally, because you're trauma bonded... I don't want you to feel like I'm disrespecting them. I'm just trying to say that a narcissist has no good intentions for you. You know, they have no good intentions for you at all. And we need to put these things in place to let them suffer the consequences. Let them drive themselves crazy in their minds by ruminating about us. Let us be that grade A supply that got away. That grade A supply that's put them on block. That grade A supply that's implemented parallel parenting. That grade A supply that's implemented no contact to the best of our ability. That, that grade A supply, the one that got through their fingers and slipped away and escaped them because they want to hold you in chains. They want to keep you bound. They want to keep you bound. Yeah? And they're sitting there thinking about ways of trying to keep you bound. Yeah? Or they're sitting there getting satisfied off your misery. If some of you are still hurting still, they're sitting there somewhere in the world getting satisfaction off your misery. So make it clear that you're not miserable. Make it clear that you're not miserable. Don't feed into them, but make it for yourself that you're not miserable. Try and heal to the best you can. It all takes time. And as I always say, time does not heal. But through time, we learn how to deal with this. Now we know the bad. We can let the good in our lives. We thought we had good. That's all of us that all we're caught up on through the trauma bond. We think it's good. Through the love bond, we think it's good. It's not good. They're a narcissist. They're a toxic personality. They don't want, they don't have love. They don't have empathy, they don't have compassion, they don't have mercy, they don't have that. They're very sadistic individuals, yeah? It's why you can pour your heart out to them, they won't reciprocate it. Someone who just chooses just to, to ignore you, give you silent treatment, not reciprocate, you don't need that drama in your life, you don't need that in your life. So let them stew, let them ruminate, let them go over things in their head. Let them go crazy. Let them know that you're the one that escaped. You're the one that's got the power in your hands. Yeah? We're always looked at as the empath, as they're the weak one. No, we're not. We're a lot stronger than they are. 
yeah. <coughs> These lot are very insecure. They're very, very insecure. They're very, very insecure. Okay. They, they're very miserable. All right. They don't know what they want. They're very manipulative. And they ruminate on them. And they sit there and get all these premeditative plans that they did to bring destruction in your life. They sat and dwelled on it before they've done it, you know. They sat and dwelled before they acted out anything negative towards your life accordingly. And then when you tried to, when you was in there in a desperate situation, when you was trying to reach out to them or try and speak to them, they looked at you with pity. They looked down at you and they backed away. Yeah, and then they started giving you silent treatment. Some of them ghosted you, some of them disappeared. And all they're trying to do is inflict misery in your life because it makes them feel better. When you're dealing with someone who functions like that, forget about it. The best thing we would want them to do, yeah, in reality, because some of them are proper weirdos. Some of them will stalk you. Some of them will do these types of things. They'll stalk, your, they'll stalk around your house. They'll stalk you on social media. Still, it's all negative energy. That's why we have to cleanse ourselves and ask God or the universe to protect us from these, from these, from these kind of vampires. You know what I mean? They, 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 they stay stuck in their ways, man. But anyway, um, just let them, let them stew, let them ruminate, ruminate you about as much as you want. And this is the reason why I made this video is because I want you to know your value. You are valuable you see what i mean you are a great day supply if you've done these things for them stop looking at looking at the situation thinking you didn't do enough they make you think you didn't do enough you've done enough and more for them yes we're not perfect but you've done enough and more you battled when they was draining you of supply and you still poured forth love you battled it through man you gave them your all and they shot you down and someone that shoots you down when someone's giving their all, they're not worthy of you. And don't regret reaching out. Don't regret trying to make amends. You done what a decent person would do to their loving companion. Okay? You didn't realize they were a narcissist yet. So, or you wasn't fully awakened like you are now. So, just don't worry about it, yeah? Let them, let them stew, let them think about you. They ruminate you about you a lot, yeah? But let's try and adopt these things in our lives, like the parallel uh, parenting if you've got children, the grey rock method if you've got children, um, the no contact, absolute no contact if you don't have children. Let's try and implement these things in our, in, in our life to make it um, crystal clear to them that we're not interested. We have many things that we can implement into our lives. We're, we're learning from these videos and stuff like that. So let's implement the stuff that we're learning and let's defeat these narcissists. So yeah. leave the video there. Uh, please press the like and the subscribe button. And if you want a one-to-one -one session, you can find the details in the description box. Anyway, I'll catch you again soon. Peace.